God sent you Barabbas. My orders are absolute. Anyone caught harming women or children faces death. Disperse them only. What do we do with the zealots, sir? No mercy for any of those bastards. Those bandits deserve death. Each and every one of them. Weren't you ordered not to show your face in this city for at least a year? Why did you return within the week? I couldn't bear it. I had to come back. This is my town. My home! The one who must leave Jerusalem is the commander of vultures. He must leave, not I! What do we do now? Attack them. Have no mercy. Kill whoever says Jesus is God. Or the Son of God. Zealots. Brave devotees. Show them no mercy. Holy warriors, attack them. Attack them all. It is now time to draw your daggers and defend Moses' religion. Do not let them blaspheme in the city of God. Attack! Attack! Why do you wait? Attack! General. Adrian. What is all this racket? It's the people, sir. The zealots and the people are fighting. Why are they fighting? They are fighting about Jesus. It's a small riot. But a riot that will soon set everything ablaze. It all started with the prophet of Galilee. And it will end with him as well. You have summoned the High Priest? Yes. The High Priests and King Herod. Oh, that funny king. Together with the Holy Council of Jewish people. Sounds like a good day. Ah, well, all right. Tell them to come in. Of course, sir. Sir. Well, well. At last, we're able to gather the High Priests and King Herod all together at the same time under the one roof. Perhaps another miracle by the Nazarene. Can the General not hear the voices outside? They begin a new tumult every day. Here, there, everywhere rise the flames of dissension. Ever higher they rise up. It's as if the people have lost their senses. They're crazy. Lost control. Here is the report from the high priests in the Nain synagogue about the fire that the rebels started there. Is the high priest of the temple panicking? I've never before seen you talk like that. As if it is the end of the world. Sir. Chief Engineer, is it true you have built a vault of gold under the Holy of Holies in the temple? General Pilate, you are mistaken. You mustn't listen to the gossiping of hooligans in Jerusalem. 
The point is the solidity of the building I built, and I guarantee that. I am simply repeating that which I have heard. The gold under Solomon's temple today wasn't even seen in his own palace. Can you explain that? General Pilot, shouldn't we return to the main point? Actually, that is exactly the point. I can say with absolute certainty that in none of our colonies exists so much poverty, misery, or wretchedness. Nowhere! I am concerned. If it weren't because of your double dealing, these people wouldn't be so poor. These people wouldn't be so poor that when a mild breeze blows from the village of Nazareth, the pillars of Galilee and Judea start shaking. People are not with you. Because you think only of your own interests. Just that. Mind, I am not a Jew. But if I were, I swear to you by my military honor that I would rise up against you like them. It seems you've become a follower of that vagrant preacher. Perhaps you wish to join the barefooted legionnaires of Jesus of Nazareth, huh? Is that right? Incidentally, my situation is no better than yours. I'm finished. If Rome were to hear this almighty noise, I don't know what would happen. Who knows? It's possible they have already heard it. It seems then that you are quite fortunate. You will leave us in this rebellion-stricken dust bowl for the elegant civility of Rome. How lucky. You are mistaken, Harry. As representative of the Roman Caesar, I take my orders directly from him. My main job here is that in the case of incapability or inefficiency of the local authorities, it is up to me to suppress any riot. We are all on the same side. This danger threatens us equally. The flames of the riot that he has started will not be put out soon. It will burn everything down into ashes. Yesterday, Galilee. Today, in Judea. Tomorrow. Are you trying to say it will spread to Rome as well? It may even go beyond Rome. I have heard he knows the Torah and the books of the previous prophets better than any priest or scribe. How come... You, the heads of the Sanhedrin, do not approve of him. Is it perhaps that his miracles bother no, you? No, no, that isn't it. He just doesn't believe in anything. You may as well say he doesn't believe in you. Isn't that the real point? Excellencies, ask me, won't you? I am well informed of the details. As he said himself, the teaching of the people in the Sanhedrin are based on distortions of events in Jewish history. Or, as they like to put it, Moses' religion. General, it is a fight between them. It has nothing to do with us. You are mistaken. It has nothing to do with it Rome. It does, I tell you, it does. The rebellion this man has started it will jeopardize your rule as well, General. Perhaps we should arrest him. He has no army. Right then. Let's imprison and him. And then? What? Would you like me to kill him as well? General, this is no laughing matter. You must take it seriously. If not, you will be considered guilty before the Emperor. Showing a lack of determination in suppressing this uprising will smear the Emperor's name. General, in this instance, you must think beyond your own balance of power. So you must do something about the rioting. In Judea, and Galilee, and soon beyond. 
More rioting has occurred in Galilee in the last few days than there has been in the last ten years combined. We have had reports of rioting from at least 80 synagogues, both far and near. That's right. There are many who have been killed. You must put a stop to it. You must find him. I say he is hiding somewhere in the Jordanian desert. All right. Say we find him. What then? Well, I think you know as well as I do he will not be easily caught. We will spread among the people that whoever finds him will be rewarded. We will surely find him then. Then we will capture him with the testimony of great political and religious figures such as His Majesty Herod, the eminent Caiaphas, and yourself. I believe the people will lose faith in him. They will not support him. Shall we kneel before him? No, sir. No, we will not. We will ask him to end this trouble once and for all. Yes. I do not understand you priests, but I admire your cleverness. With your combined cunning, you should have the whole world eating out of your hands. My opinion is you are ahead of your time. But tell me something. Is it not you priests who want the layman to call him the Son of God? No. No, sir. No. Our sole concern is the people. We seek only to unify them. That is all. Now we must be leaving. This problem has been resolved, right? We have all agreed. We must find the Nazarene and arrest him. Right? We will report the outcome of this discussion to His Eminence Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin Council. That is all. It is not up to us. Caiaphas has the final say. Good night. Good night. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Master! Master! Master, from what do you flee? By God's will, I heal the blind and enable the deaf to hear. But alas, I could not heal the fool. Now I flee from the foolish people. Leave me! Master! Master! People, your attention. I speak for the great pilot. We are informed of a riot. His Excellency, the Procurator, deals with the reports received from different regions. Hundreds of people have been wounded. Twenty or more killed. Why? It is your own dispute. It matters not to us. Which of the two titles you attribute to the man from Galilee? God, or the Son of God. But, 
According to Roman edict, we are duty-bound to keep peace and order here. Today, all of us, King Herod, the High Priest, Joseph Caiaphas, and the Roman Governor of Jerusalem, General Pontius Pilate, have gathered here today to solve this problem. I, Joseph Caiaphas, High Priest of Solomon's Temple and Head of the Great Sanhedrin, announce that whoever can turn in Jesus of Nazareth to us or give us reliable information about his present whereabouts will receive a great reward from the temple's holy treasure. The largest reward ever given to a commoner. Master, look! Satan has raised a new sedition in Judea. May God take away from Satan the dominion which he has over sinners. He is our God. Oh, people! Prostrate yourselves! Prostrate yourselves! O oh, madmen, get ye from before me. Children of Israel, I confess before God that I am a stranger to all that ye have said. I am no God. Why do you not use the blessing of your wisdom and see that I am a mortal, born of a woman like you all? I am but a man, subject to the judgment of God, suffering the miseries of eating and sleeping. suffering cold and heat, just like any other man. Wherefore, when God shall come to judge, then my words like a sword shall pierce each and every person who believes me to be more than any other man put on God's earth. Master, so many people have come here. Even King Herod. Look. Pilate, too. 
who has come with Roman guards as well. And look, Master! Over there, the High Priest has come with others. Oh, what is happening today? Is it possible they have also gone mad? Everyone has come. Sir, you cannot know the High Priest well. He is the only priest who has ever changed two governors. Perhaps he wants to change me, too. Not in front of this crowd. You know how clever he is. But the cleverer is me. Beware of that which you do, accursed priest. Fear the living God. Fear our and these people's God. Judea is so greatly moved by your miracles and your teachings. Some cry out that you are a God. Therefore, that by the people, I am constrained to come here with the Roman governor and King Herod. We pray, therefore, that you will be content to remove the sedition that has occurred on your account. For some say that you are a god. And others say, the Son of God. And then, there are the others. They seem to think you are a prophet. And you, O oh High Priest, why have you not remedied this? Quietened the sedition. Have you perhaps also gone mad? Have the prophecies with the law of God passed so into oblivion? As God lives and in whose presence my soul stands, I confess before heaven that I am a stranger to all that men have said of me, that I am more than man. You have greatly sinned in saying that which you have. Roman governor. And you, King of Galilee. If you read the testament and covenant of our God, you would see that Moses, with a rod, turned water into blood and turned the dust into fleas. 
the dew into tempest, and the light, and light to darkness. He made the frogs and the mice come into Egypt, which then covered completely the ground by this miracle. And then he slew the firstborn of the pharaohs and parted the sea, whereby he drowned the pharaoh. Of all these things, I have done none. And of Moses, everyone agrees that he is a dead man. If you read the prophets, Elijah made fire come down from the heavens. And of Elijah, everyone agrees that he is a mortal man. Oh, Jesus, I beg you, stand up on this mound so everyone is able to see you. Yes, so that everyone may hear your voice and benefit from your invaluable speech. O oh, High Priest, you come with me. To confirm my words. It is written in the Testament of the Living God. that our God had no beginning, nor shall he have an end. That is correct. Even so, it is written therein. It is written there, that our God is everywhere, and there exists no deity but him, that he gives death, life, and heals, and he does all that pleases him. Even so, it is. It is written there that God is invisible and hidden from the mind of man. Seeing he is incorporeal and uncomposed without variability, so it is truly. It is written there that God has no need, for he eats not, nor sleeps, nor does he suffer from any deficiency. O oh people, hear what I say, and the high priest confirms it. It is written there, how skies hold him not. It is written there, that God has no need. He does not eat. He does not sleep, nor suffer from any deficiency. It is written there, that our God is everywhere, and there exists no deity but Him. This is my faith wherein I shall come to your judgment in testimony against everyone who believes the contrary. Jesus, in the book of Moses, it is written that our God shall send us a final messenger. Who shall come to announce that which God wills? When shall he arrive, the one who shall bring to this world the mercy of God? Therefore, I pray, Jesus, 
please tell us the truth. Yes, please tell us. Yes, please Will tell us the truth. If you are the last tell messenger who we have been promised in the book of Moses, I entreat you then, tell us that you are so. Indeed, it is true. God has so promised. But I am not he. For he is made before me, and shall come after me. Jesus, by your words and signs, at any rate, we believe you to be a prophet and a holy one of Almighty God. Wherefore, I pray to you in the name of all Judea and the Israelite tribes that you, for the love of God, should tell us in which manner he will come. As God lives, in whose presence my soul stands, I am not he who all the tribes of the earth are expecting. Even as God promised to our father Abraham, saying, In thy seed I will bless all the tribes of the earth. But when God shall take me away from the world, Satan will most certainly rise again. This accursed sedition by making the impious believe I am God. Whence my words and doctrine shall be contaminated, that scarcely thirty faithful shall remain, whereupon God will have mercy upon the world, and will then send his messenger, for whom he has made all things, who shall come from the south with power, and shall destroy the idols with the idolaters, who shall take away the dominion from Satan which he hath over men. He should bring with him the mercy of God for salvation of them who shall believe, and blessed is he who shall believe his words. Distress not yourself, Holy One of God, because in our time shall not this sedition be any more. We will end it. Indeed, we will write to the Roman Senate and have decreed that by imperial order that none shall any more call you the Son of God or call you God himself. With your words, I am not consoled, because where you hope for light, darkness shall come. But my consolation is in the coming of the messenger, who shall destroy every false opinion of me, and his faith shall spread and take hold of the world and everything in it. For so had God promised to Abraham, and that which gives me consolation is that his faith shall have no end. Which shall be kept inviolable by God. Tell us, after the coming of the messenger of God, shall there as well come other prophets? There shall not come after him true prophets sent by God. How shall he be called? How shall he be called? You must tell us that. You must tell us that. So that we may distinguish him from the false prophets. Right? The name of the messenger is admirable, for God himself gave him the name, and created his soul, and God said, Wait, Muhammad, for thy sake 
I will create paradise, the world and a great multitude of creatures, whereof I make thee a present. Insomuch that whoever bless thee shall himself be blessed. It is written, When I shall send thee into the world, I shall send thee as my messenger, my messenger of salvation. And thy world shall be true, insomuch that heaven and earth shall fail. But thy faith shall never fail. O people, the blessed name of the Prophet who comes, Muhammad. Muhammad. People, did you hear his words? Jesus, we need to know who you are for the quieting of our nation so that we know you well. So that we know you well and do not make a mistake about you. You know me. I am Jesus, son of Mary. progeny of the prophet Aaron and the seed of David. A mortal man who fears God and I seek for God to be given honor and glory. On that day, the Roman procurator wrote to the Roman Senate about the new prophet, so that he may enjoy the Senate's support in suppressing the sedition in his territory. Thank you. 